Okay, so let's see how well you understand the basic math concept of ratios. All right, so we have a math word problem here that involves ratios. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem, which is the following. A recipe calls for two cups of flour, two thirds cups of milk, and one half cup of sugar. What is the ratio of flour to milk to sugar? All right, so this is the problem, but we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 12 to 4 to 3, B is 3 to 4 to 12, C is 1 to 4 to 8, and D is 4 to 3 to 2. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second, then of course I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you want a nice, easy to understand way to learn math, well then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take another look at the problem. So a recipe calls for two cups of flour, two thirds cups of milk, and one half cup of sugar. So this is the ratio. So actually we wanna um, uh, express this ratio in terms of flour to milk to sugar. All right, so this order definitely um, is important. And we need to select this ratio from our answer, right? So in other words, one of these is the correct answer. There's different ways to uh, express a ratio, but which one of these right here is equivalent to the ratio that's going on in the problem? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is A, which is 12 to four to three. All right, now, if you got that right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost, can you help me out? Well, I definitely can. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And the first thing that we need to uh, understand here is that we are dealing with a multiple choice math question. So for those of you that still have to take math tests and you're like, I don't even know where to start, well, just take a guess, right? So even if you don't know what to do, uh, it's better to take a guess to leave a question blank. All right, but uh, obviously we wanna know the math here. And let's just start with the notation because a lot of you out there may not understand that this little colon thing right here, this notation means the word two, right? So in math, this uh, uh, notation, again, this symbol means the word two. All right, so we would express this as 12 to four to three. But the question here is what? What is the ratio of flour to, okay? And of course we can replace that word two with this colon. So flour to milk, to sugar. All right, and of course the order is important, but uh, we really can't even understand this problem unless we understand what the word ratio means. All right, so this is a big topic in math because ratios um, relate to something called a rate. And then uh, if you're studying rates and ratios, then you typically need to understand what a proportion is. So the way this is taught generally in mathematics is you study what a rate and ratio is, and then you learn about proportions. But we're just gonna kind of narrow our focus to ratios. All right, so what is a ratio? Well, in uh, kind of very simple terms, a ratio is a fraction. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples of ratios, and then of course we'll get back to the solution here. So let's take a look at this right here. All right, so here is a ratio of cars to trucks. Okay, so here maybe here's the highway. So if we have this ratio, five cars to one truck, so we would have five cars here. These are really terrible cars, but you get the idea. So we have one, two, three, four, and here is five. And then here would be like one truck, right? It's a real bad <laughs> sketch, but you get the idea. All right, so for every five cars, one, two, three, four, five, we have a truck. All right, so we can express this uh, kind of relationship as a ratio, five cars to one truck. Now, um, here, if we have double the cars, right? So let's say we have 10 cars, how many trucks would we expect to have? Well, we would have two trucks. So the ratio stays the same. The numbers can change, but the ratio stays the same. 
So if we multiply this one by a two, so one or two times one, of course, is two, and then two times this five is 10. But the ratio still uh, stays the same. Now, as I indicated, you can express a ratio as a fraction. So five cars to the fraction bar is the word two. Okay, so we can think of ratios as a fraction. Matter of fact, this is the best way to kind of think of a ratio. So in simple terms, rates and ratios are fractions, but there is a, uh, a real important distinguishing factor. I'll explain that in just one second, but we can express this ratio as uh, five cars to one truck this way, five cars, all right? So we're gonna put a C here to indicate that we're talking about cars, five cars to one truck. All right, now this is equivalent or the same as the ratio as 10 cars to two trucks, right? Because 10 divided by two is five and five divided, uh, five divided by one is five. All right, so what is the kind of definition of a ratio? Well, in kind of real basic terms, a ratio is a fraction where the units of measure, okay? In other words, what the numbers are expressing are the same unit of measure, right? They're basically counting the same thing. Now, somebody might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm a little bit confused here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and give you a quick definition of a rate, and then we'll get back to ratios because I think this will make sense. All right, or make better sense. So let's uh, take 60 miles per hour, right? So anytime you hear or you see the word uh, per, okay, uh, expressed like 60 miles per hour, this is a rate, okay? So if we have a car, the rate of that vehicle would be something like 60 miles per hour, but a rate is a fraction. So that means 60 miles per, okay, that word per is the fraction bar to one hour. All right, so we have a fraction, but what are the units of measure up here? So the numerator is expressing distance, right? So this is distance, and the denominator is expressing time or counting time. So distance and time have nothing to do with one another. So a rate is when you have a fraction where the numerator and denominator are uh, basically counting totally separate units of measure. Okay, so some sort of a comparison like distance and times or gallons to a minute, something like that. And uh, kind of a real good indicator that you're dealing with the rate is that you have that word per, right? So 60 miles per hour. And the per, just like the two here, is the fraction bar. All right, now um, a ratio is where you have a fraction where basically the numerator and denominator are counting the same units of measure. So this could be a little bit confusing here because you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're counting cars and trucks. Well, really what we're counting here is uh, vehicles, okay? So we're just counting vehicles in general, so five vehicles to one vehicle. So when the units of measure are the same, okay, you're dealing with a ratio. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And again, when you study rates and you study ratios, then you learn about something called proportions. But uh, we don't need to know all of that for this particular problem, but we do need to have a good sense of what a ratio is. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. So uh, we have a recipe. Now, a recipe calls for two cups of flour, uh, two thirds cups of milk, and one half cup of sugar. Now, here is the ratio, right, for this particular recipe. Now, if we want to make more than, you know, what would uh, be re required for just two cups of flour, two thirds cups of milk, and one half cup of sugar, well, we need to adjust our amounts according to this ratio, right? So anyone that cooks, you know, and uh, basically reads recipes understands it. So the problem is, what is the ratio, or the question rather, is what is, what is the ratio of flour to milk to sugar? Okay, so once again, we have this word two, okay, so we wanna kind of think about this as a colon or a fraction. And I think the best way for this particular problem is we can think of this in terms of a colon because we have three things here. We're not just talking about cars and trucks, we're talking about flowers, milk, and sugar, okay? So we're gonna think about this uh, ratio in this manner, flour to milk to sugar. All right, so let's just kind of uh, write this in a simpler manner. All right, so here is our ratio of flour to milk to sugar. So it's two cups of flour, two thirds cups of milk, and one half cup of sugar. All right, so this is the ratio from the recipe, but remember the problem is uh, the following. Let me just go ahead and back up here. We need to select from this multiple choice question, i.e. which one of these here 
uh, ratios is the one that describes the recipe. Now, if you notice, our answers have no fractions, so we need to find the equivalent ratio. All right, so how do we do that? Well, basically what we want to do is get rid of these fractions, right? So if we can uh, clear the fractions away, then we'll have a nice ratio without fractions and we can, of course, identify the answer. All right, so the question is, how do we clear fractions? I have two, two thirds and one third. In other words, how can I uh, write an equivalent uh, set of three numbers without fractions? Well, the idea here is to multiply all these uh, fractions by the lowest common denominator. All right, now we have two fractions here, but we also have two, but you, you can express two as a fraction as two over one. Okay, so this is how we're going to solve this problem. So my question to you is, do you know how to find the LCD of these fractions? Two over one, two thirds, and one half. And if you do, or if you know how to find the LCD, we'll just take that and then multiply by these uh, three uh, respective fractions and you will have the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish this up. Now, my goal on YouTube is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable and interesting manner. And, uh, you know, beyond that though, I'm really trying to reach as many people as I possibly can, but I can't do that without your support. And the best way you can support this channel is to simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, if you're interested in really learning math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And we're talking about basic math here and a couple good courses that you might be interested in if you really wanna learn more about rates, ratios, proportions, math, uh, basic math, algebra, you may want to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? So in this particular course, uh, if you need a good math review, this is the course for you. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up because there's really not much to do. Okay, so here we have two, which of course we can express as the fraction two over one, two thirds, which of course is two thirds and one half. So we want to find the lowest common denominator. Anytime you multiply a, a series of fractions by the LCD, it will clear the fractions. All right, so we have the denominator one, three, and two. So if you were adding these numbers up, okay, what would be the lowest common denominator? Kind of think in those terms. Hopefully you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, the LCD is six. Well, that's absolutely correct. Now, if you don't know how to find the LCD, well, you gotta check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Also, I have a ton of additional content on my YouTube channel, but uh, basically here, uh, two is a prime number, three is a prime number, and one is a prime number. So basically, to find the LCD, we just simply have to multiply each of these prime factors in these denominators. So one times three times two is six. But another good way to think about what the LCD is, it's the lowest number that uh, all these denominators will divide into without a remainder. All right, so six is the LCD uh, here, and all we have to do is simply multiply uh, these numbers by six. All right, so six times two, of course, is 12, and we're gonna uh, go ahead and express this as a ratio, and then six times two thirds is what? Well, three goes into six, two, and then two times two is four. Okay, again, we're gonna put our little uh, two, or our colon here, and then six times this one half is three. All right, so, um, although we can express in the recipe that the ratio to flour to milk to sugar is two to two thirds to one half, it might be better or simpler to express it this way. Uh, uh, flour would be 12 or 12 cups of flour to four cups of milk to uh, three cups of sugar. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense and hopefully uh, this gives us a new respect for those people that do a lot of cooking in the kitchen that really know how to use recipes. And uh, when it comes to mathematics, a lot of people say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, whenever, when, uh, when am I ever gonna use this stuff, right? Well, when it comes to ratios or you know basic math like this, this is something that you definitely want to know, which means you have to understand how to work with fractions. Okay, so hopefully this video was interesting. And if that was the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.